Hey there, it's Jessica Joy. This is my story, Dot Solutions, where we, we are individuals sharing the reality of pornography's destruction together, creating a nation without exploitation. And today, I am wearing a t-shirt that is the reason why Oklahoma does not have pornography legislation. <coughs> This t-shirt is why Oklahoma does not have pornography legislation. This t-shirt is why we do not have the resolution to um, separate from funding, enforcing, endorsing all that is not natural, neutral, nor leads to human flourishing, also known as our resolution um, declaring that secular humanism is a religion for the sake of the establishment clause. So what happened in Oklahoma? Okay, so I have found out that... <clears throat> The idea of abolition, like maybe we can abolish abortion, came around to like 2011, 2014. And a lot of people used a lot of different tactics. It was like running into a burning building. You know, you're going to grab the ketchup bottle. You're going to grab magnesium. You're going to grab, uh, you're going to grab anything, the everything to put out this fire. And so the first people to dash to the state houses were the ones with the burn and hell signs. And it's like, okay, so I haven't heard of them because they're the burn hell sign people. Oh, so. So everybody went chopping away at abolition. Nobody really had a strategy. It was like, we've abandoned government. How do we get back in? Um, yeah, there is no playbook for this. It's like, oh my gosh, you completely abandoned your, your Christian authority. So now we have, I have this book called, um, Doctrine of the Lesser, Lesser Magistrates, where it's biblical for Christ followers to rise up. So there is a manual. There is a manual, and I can't wait to go over it with you. But there is a manual for when Christ followers should engage government um, and be a, be a part of government. This is our biblical responsibility that we completely abandoned. So there's a little marvelous idea that um, as a former um, sex trafficker, I guess you could definitely, let's go with madam, um, force, fraud, coercion, uh, coming from the sex industry. Like, I repented and I completely turned my lifestyle around. I completely got like everything that wasn't nailed down, got thrown away, burned. Like I didn't want to have anything to do with my old past and I completely repented. So it's like mind blowing to me that I meet so many Republicans that are not willing to, um, repent. Like that just blows my mind. Like imagine if there was a Republican caucus where everybody got down on their knees and just spent the entire time repenting and mourning. Nope not going to happen. No, just kidding. We're going to pray for this. But like, so we've sent people into battle and that's half the battle. Um, I was talking to awesome follower Lynette, who's running for office down in Texas. And she's like, uh, my primary is coming up. Would love to, you know, let's like, she's campaigning and I would love to help people campaign for office. But I also, when I talk and inspire your churches so I can share my story. Awesome. Separate. Then I can pay a dollar to rent your church so that we can have a training session. And I will explain, this is a two way street. We are going to send awesome Christian godly build women to office, but we've got to have their back. Like that's only half the battle is getting them into office, having their back through ever as they stand to the platform, um, having their back. Oh, well, we're from a nowhere County. Most of these state leaders are from like the house of representatives and the, the Senate leaders. They're from no name counties. Okay. So your no name County can really have an impact. And so you being from a no name County and you're like, well, my no name County woman will never get anywhere. She just might. That's the God I serve. And it's like, well, what happened? She's a no name. This is her first year. This is her first session. Well, what if we figure out when all of their Republican caucus meetings are taking place and we stand outside with our bills. I have a suitcase back here. The most expensive thing in this car is legislation. And we stand outside their Republican caucus meetings and we hold their feet to the fire. Hi, here's this bill. Where is it? Hi, there's his, this here's so that they know your little Lynette as the, you, we are the kingmaker. We make her the king through the power of Jesus Christ. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and what the word of our testimony that we don't love our life even unto death. I just, oh, I want to see people like Lynette in Texas, get into office. I want to be a part of her campaign, but I also want to inspire her local caucus. I also want to inspire her local Republicans. I want to inspire every single church that understands godly and biblical authority and say, we can send her into office, but we got to have her back that we are standing outside of the Republican caucus meetings, which take place during session, like every other week or every week or every other day. It depends on how aggressive they want to be, where we hold their feet to the fire and we know what committee we're focused on the, the family service 
Services Committee. We're focused on the Judiciary Committee. We are focused on every committee, like every committee in Texas that has to do with family. You're reading their bios. You're you are finding out everything about the committees that our bills will always be in, heard in. Our bills always pertain to the family, so our bills will always be heard in the family services. And so we want to be friends with those people. We want to say, hey, I've got your back. Carry these bills. We'll get signatures. We'll get co-sponsors. We'll make noise. Um, I saw that the Iowa Standard good friend up there wrote an article about like what survived the funnel week in Iowa. Obviously, our bills didn't until I went and recorded what sex trafficking looks like at Tamara Scott's hotel. Tamara Scott is the Republican chairwoman of Iowa and she owns a hotel which is a blatant conflict of interest and um, here's the power and the authority that lobbyists have. Well we might go in I I came in the state house once a week, uh, once a month, I came in the state house. Nobody remembers you. When you walk into the office, there's 40 people right after you. When you walk into the office, there's 40 people right after you. Who are they going to listen to? The 40 people that are showing up, the 40 people that are participating, the 40 calls, the 40 emails. This is a two-way relationship. I want to see Lynette take office, but I also want to train her core of people, her pastors, her local pastors, everyone who hasn't stepped into the religion of secular humanism. And I want to say, this is a two-way relationship that when we send her in, we've got to have her back. I want to come to your churches and say, this is how to track bills that are that are on the LGBTQ uh, policy platform and this is where they're assigned make sure they're killed hey this is where our bills are assigned make sure that they go forward and I have so my what's my demographic seniors I can have so many seniors on the phones on the emails and do you know what I mean, I mean this is gonna crack you up okay so I have been front row to watching all the states pass um, uh, marijuana and so um, Every single day in every single office, um, legislative assistants would laugh and go in that. He calls every single day. So yes, it's their job to take your call and tally it every single day that you save to your cell phone, uh, your state representative, your state senator, um, and you call them on a weekly basis, if not a daily basis. Hey, please, can you push this? Can you can you make sure this is heard? And, and when they're like, I don't have the authority. Okay, so I'm going to come into your churches and I'm going to train you who has the authority to have bills heard. We do want our Christian Christ followers to be head of committees because the committee chairperson dictates what is heard and what is not heard. I am at the Oklahoma State House today because there is a, as you might say, there's, oh, what influence could I have out in the middle of nowhere? Well, there is a guy out in the middle of Ida, Oklahoma, that is completely stopping abortion, of uh, the abolition of a, abortion being heard today. We're going in, and as they walk into their hearing, their last hearing, the last hearing that, that uh, the bills had to be through by deadline, the last hearing, they're going to see our faces. They're going to see our t-shirts. I mean, like we can be seeking amazing grace as they will always remember my face when you had the authority, you had the power, you had the power and you chose to do nothing. Newsflash, no one is going to remember your name for keeping your space. So these people, so the lobbyists, why they're trying to keep the lobbyists happy because mm, go into followthemoney.org, which I just discovered like two or three days ago because I was finding out the corruption of Concerned Women for America. And um, you'll go on to Iowa's uh, lobbyists. There's a lobbyist tab. You're going to go look at the ones that have like 30 or 40 uh, clients. Nobody is in the state house for us. These people are absolutely corrupt. There's hundreds of them at our state house every single day. And unless we get the culture where if I'm not at the state house, make sure that they're at the state house, make sure they're at the state house. Like the culture here in Oklahoma City at the house that I was so blessed to stay in last night, the um, it's a house full of Generation Z, like the under 20, 21, and then a gener the generation older, the millennials. And it's a house that they are running. They're the young Republicans of the state. They are going to watch Washington, D.C. representing the young Republicans of the state. They're the ones to make sure that they're always mentoring and always preparing for office. The younger ones and the younger ones and the younger ones. And the house that I stayed in last night, I don't know how many square feet it is, but um, I don't know how many square feet it is of the house that I stayed in. But without guests, there's 18 people in that house. Without guests. 
Uh, yeah, there was five beds in the garage. I was in the garage. So like this is a house that trains a culture to take back our authority. I want to say thank you to Senator Silk here in Oklahoma. I found him. So that you're wondering how I know about Senator Silk and abolition is because my job, so to speak, as I'm going to train you and train your churches, is that my job was to find out the who should sponsor our bills. So um, my job is to find somebody who whose wheelhouse was all Already abortion. My job was to find out whose wheelhouse uh, they already take on things that have to do with pornography. They already so my wheelhouse was to research who should run our legislation because we quickly found out that you don't want just anybody running your legislation. And so I found Senator Silk, but I found a, um, a video of his mother first, and she's going crazy on right to life and exposing them for their corruption, and it's an undercover little video, and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this woman! So we saw it out of Senator Silk. I love this woman, and Senator Silk picked up all eight of our bills, and then I was like, oh my gosh, we shouldn't, uh, you don't give all eight of your bills to one person because then they fire squad the whole, there goes all your eight bills, but I'm I'm like, any so this is basically the last day of, I mean, like, so they have stripped Senator Silk of his chair and authority and his power. They've stripped him of his all, like the people that I work with are the crazies in their states and they strip them of all titles, all authority, that all they do there all day is just press a button. Yay, nay, yay, nay, yay, nay. And they strip all power and authority because they're the crazy one. I don't know, because it's your platform. Yes, the, the platform in Oklahoma has switched from abol from pro-life to abolition only. The platform last spring was argued out that it was going to be heard in the house and it was going to be heard in the Senate, but Pharaoh hardened his heart and he's getting away with it because nobody in their districts of who's hardening their heart is blowing up the phones, is showing up and saying, do you know what? I will make sure that even a Democrat runs it. I will make sure that the Democrats win because a Democrat, at least you know they're insane where you're coming in as a snake, where you're coming in as a wolf, like Republicans in Oklahoma, go ahead. And the, I mean, like train up a Republican to take over every single district because like you might as well vote for a Democrat because that's what they're acting like. How my aunt, I love her. She's getting so into this political stuff, obviously, because I'm in her house and um, she is like, wait, here's the platform. Here's no bills. Here's the platform. Here's no bills. So this is the platform of the Republican Party and there's no bills and they're not even being heard and they're not even being filed. And so we're telling people in Oklahoma and Texas to run right now. Call up your call. Call up your how. Ah, I like to talk to the Republican Party of Oklahoma. Ha, huh, I like to talk to my district leader. Ha, huh, I like to talk to the chairman of the Republican Party. Ha, huh, I like to be the platform committee. Please make me the part of the platform committee. So you can make a platform all single day, all day long, but we have a problem. It's called something's dropping the ball when we have a platform and no bills are being filed. Like, I'm trying to tell you guys, claw your way into uh, calling the Republican Party and asking how you can be a part of your district's platform, but if they're not filing our platform, that's where the ball is being dropped. And watching the Iowa Iowa uh, Standard write a article yesterday, they're like, guys, we're only participating in half the battle. <makes noise> Hello. We're only getting them, like, we're, we're all excited about being a part of their campaigns and getting them there. And then we're just, like, letting them die. Do you guys see? But repentance. So sorry, God. I'm learning. We're all learning. We're crawling over each other's bodies. We're learning. We offended people. We're learning. We're making amends. We're learning. Nobody knows exactly. There's no correct way to do There's this. There's a ton of denominations. There's a ton of different giftings, but oh my gosh, as I said in December, I'd much, much rather do something than do nothing at all. You're going to get offended. Here's your money back guarantee. Somebody's going to pee in your Cheerios. Here's a money back guarantee. Somebody's going to tick you off and reject you. I get rejected on a daily basis. Welcome to the club committee. You're going to get rejected. You're going to get laughed at. Your pastors are going to spit at you. Your board members of your church are going to think you're stupid and insane. Do I need to go on? Um, your friends are going to be thinking that you're radical. Your, uh, your nephew and niece is going to think you're stupid. You're going to get mocked. You're going to be not invited from Thanksgiving. You're going to be uninvited from Christmas. Like get over it. Um, do you want to be, our grandkids are going to ask, what'd you do? And you're like, well, I was silent because I was trying to win a popularity contest with my family. 
family out of asylum because I was trying to win a popularity contest with my church. You're in the wrong church. Did you guys not see the most shared article on my timeline this last week was the one that shows all the denominations that are fully uh, embracing um, abortion and homosexuality? You got Presbyterians, Lutherans, Episcopalians, uh, Methodists. And yes, I know there's a million different sects of them now. Sects? Sect. Anywho, I don't know how to say that, but there's, there's a million denominations breaking off whatever, but you've got, man, if they run, I was born and raised in the assemblies of God, but the second that they s switch a rule, I'll be like, bye Felicia, see you later, rah, from prison, but like, yeah, because they're, they're entertaining sexual perversion, of course they're going to be the sex buyers and the pit pedophiles oh but we're legalizing sex buying and we're legalizing pedophilia okay let's do nothing so anywho, i love you guys i'm here at the oklahoma state house this is the last day for senator silk to have this moment where he can click yes no on votes but he will be known as the man who completely shook the state he will be known as the man that separated the sheets from the goats in that town in that little house up there he will be he will leave a legacy of div like he separated he brought separation to are you do you believe in the platform because you ain't voting like that are do you are, are you a christ followers oh you went to go see unplanned oh how'd that go oh i'm so proud you posted you went and oh you're pro-life no this is the moment anyways just chilling at the house with the senator silk's daughter sister and i'm like what's next for senator silk the house that i stayed at they want a culture of training releasing training releasing training releasing so keep go ahead and write on your little notepad shared or shield Oklahoma because he wants to go into public speaking and full-time speaking if he does not get a congressional uh, seat at the federal level see state federal um, that he is going to go full-time into embracing and training up um, people in different states to like come on take the helm Anyways, just wanted to go Facebook Live. This sure is why we don't have porn legislation in Oklahoma. This sure is why we don't have most of the platform in Oklahoma because uh, we don't have the se separation of secular humanism because of this shirt. We don't have the separation uh, from funding, enforcing, endorsing what is not natural, neutral, or leads to human flourishing because of this shirt. This shirt has caused a war in this little town, this little Oklahoma, but nobody will hear about it Wah! because silence. But you know where cowards go? I don't know. I read this little verse in the Bible of where cowards go. It was quite entertaining. Go ahead and look it up. Say, dear Google, Google the Bible. Bible, where do cowards go? Siri, where does the Bible say cowards go? So anywho, just letting you know where cowards go. And in a red state with a red house and a red senate and a red governor, they will pass none of our platform so that they can take up oxygen. Awesome. So yes, we can get people in that house, but we've got to hold their hand. Love you guys. Make good choices. I'm going to Texas. And if I hear back from Mississippi, I'll go to Mississippi. I have to go through Dallas to get to Mississippi. I thought that was funny. So anyways, I'm waiting for Mississippi. Waiting for a hearing in Missouri. If I don't hear anything from anybody, I'm working on Texas for the next six months. Love you.